Hello, and welcome to my third grade classroom. My name is Cassandra Daniel, and I currently teach mathematics. In this video, I'll provide a guided tour through my classroom as a means of showcasing the design, physical arrangement, and instructional artifacts featured in my students' learning environment. Regardless of whether you are viewing this video as a parent or fellow educator, my intention is that this video will provide you with a thorough look into how classroom layout and design contributes to student learning experiences. The design of my room is largely influenced by five research-based principles which are premised in the belief that classrooms that work best for students should 1. Facilitate student engagement 2. Facilitate student collaboration 3. Facilitate student connections between teachers and students 4. Incorporate appropriate technology and 5. Have a flexible physical arrangement. Let's begin our tour. Upon entry from the classroom door, visitors will find an information station which contains space for a map of the school, a highlighted emergency exit route, and copies of class lists on clipboards for attendance purposes in case of an emergency or practice evacuation. I enjoy having a space that is easily accessible and also practical and may be used by other visitors in our classroom. Also housed in the information station are dismissal arrangements detailing which students are bus riders, car walkers, or riders. I designed the center's rotation chart as an organizational tool for both students and myself to keep track of which groups will participate in any given learning center on a particular day. When working with students, I use both flexible and ability-based groups. This chart is routinely updated and modified and is used for ability grouping for a particular unit of study. As students arrive in the morning, they are able to check the chart and day to see which centers they will visit that day. My flexible grouping arrangements are located on the other side of the classroom, which will be seen momentarily. There are five center rotations in my classroom. The Current Events Bulletin Board is a space for students, classroom visitors, and parents to stop and browse through our monthly classroom newsletter, view pictures of recent classroom activities, and serves as a reminder to keep connected with daily homework assignments, daily news, and other messages via Twitter chat which parents and students can access by cell phone, computer, or other mobile device. Listed on the front left side bulletin board is the vocabulary wall. A vocabulary or word wall is an organized collection of words prominently displayed in a classroom. This display is used as an interactive tool for teaching reading, word meaning, and spelling to children. It has been my experience that the word wall has many benefits. They teach children to recognize and spell high frequency words, see patterns and relationships in words, and apply phonics rules. Word walls also provide reference support for children during reading, math, and writing activities. Children can learn to be independent as they use the word wall in daily activities. All too often, the typical vocabulary wall is a simple arrangement of alphabetized vocabulary words written on index cards. I wanted to design a vocabulary wall that, that was accessible to a wide range of reading abilities, which are in my classroom, and learning styles, and that was arranged in a meaningful way to help students make connections between how smaller units of study related to larger themes or concepts. By incorporating universal design principles, students and I have been able to create a word wall that uses graphic organizer format, color-coded word associations, visual models and pictures, illustrations, and a classroom placement which is accessible to the whole or small group for student learning activities in which students can refer to the word wall at any time, making this a central support of vocabulary use, meaning, and application. The Unit Concepts Wall is an ever-changing bulletin board posted at the front of my classroom in which I use to support students' learning experiences by providing anchor charts, support materials, and relevant vocabulary words that apply to our current unit of study. Allowing students to reference this wall during whole group lessons allows them to be supported by visuals and words and pictures, which better enables them to participate in the whole group or partnered experiences. I also make sure to show examples of how the current unit of study is real world applicable. Oh, 
Overhead, I have a post to chart of meaningful math conversation sentence starters. These are the words and phrases and sentence starters that students use as they participate in whole group, partner, and individual sharing aloud responses. Featured in the center of the front chalkboard space is our classroom interactive whiteboard for teaching and learning in the 21st century. This tool is a must. In this section of the room, I display the daily do's because we do these descriptors daily. They include a discussion of the day's current learning objectives and classroom promises and the date. The classroom promises describe the five expectations for student behavior and conduct. Beside each promise is a sticky note where student names are written as a visual record if they required a verbal redirection. Students are permitted three warnings per week. If students make it through the week with less than three warnings, they may participate in any of the rewards which are pictured. These awards range from lunch with the teacher to a prize from the prize box. The consequences for having more than three warnings are also illustrated. I've implemented this system for several years with huge success. The highly prized skills that employers look for today are problem solving, reasoning, and decision making. The foundation for becoming proficient at these skills is certainly mathematics. Each week, students are challenged with a problem of the week inquiry question, which requires them to enhance their critical thinking skills with problems that are related to the current classroom content. Students are given several minutes of class time at the end of each day to work on the problem and are encouraged to conduct outside research in pursuit of resolving the weekly challenge. The problem of the week question has been a great way to facilitate real-world connections to math as the challenges are not always answer-specific and integrate current events. Students share their resolutions each week in the Math Wiz Kids Share Aloud Chair. One effective strategy for communicating results is the use of data walls. In my classroom, I have designed a data wall that is easily accessible to administrators, parents, and my students. I designed a data card for each student that identified their specific scores on unit and benchmark assessments. I routinely conference with students, and during this time, we discuss their individual learning plans and make performance goals. This card contains a space for students to write their goal, and after assessments, students are able to self-assess their progress as it relates to their performance goals. Because the learning process is a partnership between myself, parents, and the student, a space on the card indicates the specific course of actions the students will undertake in efforts to achieve their goal. For example, a student may select three of the ten options, which can range from having an adult review my homework before completion or accuracy, or join the lunch bunch for additional in-school math assistance, or participate in an enrichment project as a way to improve or practice skills. Student scores are covered by a sticky note for privacy. To the right of the individualized student data cards are more comprehensive data analysis charts, graphs, and my student achievement classroom action plan. Another way to facilitate learning through the use of classroom design is by using school furniture to create various learning stations throughout the room. Learning centers are located in various spots in the classroom where students are put into small groups and given a task to accomplish in an allotted amount of time. As each group completes their task, they move to the next center. Learning centers provide students the opportunity to practice hands-on skills while involved in social interaction. Having several stations throughout the room also allows the students to practice independence and learn to make their own choices. By choosing what they like to do, they stay focused and engaged in the learning process. I display a lot of anchor charts in my classroom. An anchor chart is a handmade poster or graphic representation that serves as a visual reminder of strategies, vocabulary, or other content students have learned Basically, an anchor chart is a reference tool that anchors new and ongoing learning to key concepts previously introduced. Students can refer to the anchor charts for a quick check, a reminder of how to approach a task, a way to think about a concept, or a visual aid to understand vocabulary. The binder on the right features my lesson plans, which are housed behind my small group learning station, and I also have three baskets that help keep me organized, one for assessments, classwork, and homework. I also have a bulletin board titled, Why I Teach. This has been so motivational for both myself, students, parents, and administrators. I truly enjoy what I do, and it's a great way for me to house keepsakes that are special to me and look upon throughout the day. And I saw that thing. I'm going to revamp my resume just a little bit tomorrow. Featured along the back wall are a collection of bulletin boards which include displays of standards and rubrics, curriculum and instruction, anchor charts, and student work. The Student Work Board is a standards-based bulletin board which includes student work and teacher commentary, circumstance of performance, scoring rubric, standards addressed, and tasks. For more information on standards-based bulletin boards, please visit our classroom blog or view our other videos on Curriculum Clicks. 
You're now viewing Center 2, which is the small group conference center. Uh, this is where I work with students based on their differentiated needs. This bulletin board, again, houses numerous anchor, anchor charts which are updated routinely. They are both teacher and student created and again will change depending upon the content we are currently exploring. The last bulletin board is our Inside the Classroom Student Work Board, which is our standard space bulletin board. There are also uh, handy craft sets which contain uh, different materials that students will need uh, at each center rotation including hand sanitizer, markers, pencils, rulers, and manipulatives. And again, for more information on our Standard Space Bulletin Board, please feel free to go to our Classroom YouTube site, which is Curriculum Clicks, which provides a detailed overview of how I put together displays of the Standard Space Bulletin Board. Again, it, uh, this is our Standard Space Bulletin Board, which includes student work and teacher commentary, circumstance of performance, the scoring rubric, the standards address, and the task, and exemplar models of students who have been able to meet the performance standards for this particular uh, domain. I have a Maryland Common Core wall which posts the uh, eight mathematical practices or standards uh, for learning for math. Uh, each of the current uh, practices that we've explored, I actually have photographed the students uh, practicing that particular uh, math standard so that they have a visual image in addition to the word image as we go about integrating the Common Core practices into our daily math and learning routine. On the back cabinet is the classroom calendar of events. Creating a classroom calendar the provides everyone with access to a look at what's ahead. In the morning, students enjoy checking the calendar as a way of organizing or counting days until an assessment, assembly, or special event will take place. To facilitate the integration of reading into mathematics, I've created a Math Masters Reading Lounge. At this lounge, students may choose from a wide selection of high interest books, uh, which are separated by uh, reading levels. Students also have the opportunity to create their own reading materials by placing pre-selected books that they choose into gallon size baggies for future use. As a means of increasing the availability of and access to learning center projects, activities, and materials, I organized a portable centers cart, which I use to store additional supplemental, remedial, and extended learning activities. By selecting the appropriate bin, as labeled, students can simply take the container to either their small group center or desk and work independently with a partner or small group as indicated by the directions included in each activity bag. I use gallon size Ziploc bags to arrange the activity according to skill and learner mastery. Housed in this portion of my classroom is our classroom turtle, appropriately named Matthew, uh, additional calculators and uh, basic storage. I also have a uh, storage closet which houses backup materials, but I use the front display as additional uh, bulletin board space to display previous anchor charts and other classroom learning tools. This is the front side wall of our classroom where again additional anchor charts are displayed and rotated out as needed. Thank you so much for stopping by our quarter two classroom environment. Look forward to seeing you soon.